today we're being joined by Beck Anderson from the Claremont Waffle W side. Beck, thanks for coming on. No worries. Thanks for having me. No worries. Tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into footy and what type of player you are? Um, I started playing footy when, like in Auskick, probably was about five or six. Um, yeah. From the country up north, um, Karnamart, so it's three hours away. So okay. I was playing with boys. It's a bit of a footy part of culture in the town, so obviously that got me into it. And um, I was probably the only girl on the team. There was one other girl for a little bit, but, yeah, just yeah. loved ever since, really. That's good. What position on the footy field do you play? Um, mostly forward. have played a bit of ruck, but more of a full forward, half forward. So what would you say is some of your biggest strengths as a footballer, as you just mentioned, playing up forward? So what would you say is some of your strengths? Uh, I'd probably say goal kicking. My accuracy is pretty good. And I think probably marking, overhead marking, and on the lead as well. And I think my kicking is pretty good. Yeah. Very good. So you mentioned there but strengths being up forward. So how would you fancy yourself in front of the big sticks? Obviously pretty confident. Um, yeah, it's probably... Um, probably one of the most confident parts of my game. Um, yeah. I feel like I just know where the goals are a lot of the time. Like, naturally, probably um, quite a bit of a forward. That's good. Are you a goal celebrator? Um, not the biggest goal celebrator, but a little bit, yeah. What's, what's some goal celebrations that you would pull out from time to time? Um... Nothing too special, just the basic, um, I know, get around your team, high fives, all that. No worries, that's fine. Um, so, obviously, any personal footy accomplishments that you had throughout your footy career, throughout juniors all the way until now, um, is there any premierships you've had in there, any best and fairest, any certain awards that you've won throughout your time? Um, well, in my junior footy, when I was playing up home, um, I won a few premierships, but one that stands out, I won three premierships in one day playing hockey, oh. football and football. So that wow. was quite a big day. Um, that was at, like junior level. And I don't think I've won any since juniors, but obviously last year playing in the um the league grand final was pretty huge, even though we didn't get the win. Um, it's a very big game in my career, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to get going to backtrack to those three premierships in one day in a second. But you just mentioned last year in the grand final with the loss. How was it leading up to the day or that whole day that morning compared to the aftermath? Although the aftermath wouldn't be great, but how was the lead up to it and how did you feel in, in the game itself? Um, Probably like a couple of days out. I was a bit stressed um, with selection and all that. Just yeah. hoping that I could keep my spot in the team. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, I probably wouldn't say I was that nervous, like, compared to some other players, but I kind mm. of was just very excited to, like, have the opportunity to play. Um, obviously, with it being on seven as well, like, just such yes. a good opportunity. Um, yeah, no, I was very excited in the lead-up to that game. So how, how do you feel you fared on, in that game in yourself, in that for individually for yourself? Um, I think I did pretty well. Um, um. Well, I always, like, have a big focus on drinking heaps of water and all that. Um, yep. Kind of treated it like any other game, really. Got my routine, had my bananas yep. and all that. <laughs> nice. So did you feel any added pressure knowing the game was on Channel 7? Yeah, I did feel quite a lot of pressure. But um, once the game started, like, I kind of forgot about it all. Like, in the room, okay. there was a camera and all that that's I was a bit stressed then I was like oh this is like this is real and then yeah, yeah. it started once I got a touch I kind of forgot about it all really it's, been, it's gone the game's gone from real to real real <laughs> once the camera's in there for a national station yeah pretty cool now we'll go backtrack three premierships in three different sports in one day I thought myself when I won back-to-back premierships from cricket and footy in the same year was big. You won three premierships in three different sports in one damn day. How how did you manage that, first of all? And then how did you feel going, ah, oh, just won a premiership, gents, after the first, or ladies, after the first game, second one, ah, oh, just won a premiership before, after that one, going to the third game, yeah, just won another one. And then after that, yeah, just won again. How did you feel? 
Um, probably at at the time, like at the age, I was probably in year five, maybe. Um, I obviously didn't really think about the magnitude of like three premierships in one day. I was just like, oh yeah, this is pretty pretty easy to feel, but. Like now, I'm like, wow! Like that will never happen to me again. And like, I'm like, there's probably not many people who have done that. Which no. Ah, cool. oh, I'm 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 amazed that anyone's ever done anything like that. that's pretty cool. Now, how do you reflect? Obviously, back then you said it was different. You much and didn't take it, well, not not seriously, but didn't think about it as much. Thinking back on it now, being much older, being 18, how do you re- reminisce? I suppose back then and realize how cool and rare. That is. Yeah, um, it's pretty cool to do it in like my hometown and with mm. my mate, friends with and stuff. And we still like talk about it to this yeah. day. And we're, like, it's just like a big wow moment. Like, yeah, obviously didn't think about it at the time, but now I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. How how do you feel you fared in all those three games? Did you would you say you were not off your game, but put off a little bit considering you've gone from game to game to game and in different sports? Um, no, I don't think it really put me off. Like, it kind of just – I got a bit more hyped up from it really. Like, and, like, um, you're basically running between sports like because, like, it's all in one day. They were back, back like, games. And not met, I think I was the only one who was playing all three because, obviously, none of the other girls really played footy. So, I was, like – running between them and, like, obviously didn't think about it. Just got very excited as I went from game to game, I think. That's good. So, obviously, being 18, obviously the AFLW dream and everything like that would still be something I'm sure that is in the, something your future that you would love to get into. Yeah, obviously, it's probably been dream of mine for ages. Um, mm-hmm. My draft year was last year, so I missed the boat a little bit, but I think this year being an 18 squad has really pushed me. Um, with my mm. pre-season, so hopefully have a consistent year and see how we go. That's good. What are some goals you set for yourself this year? Obviously playing at Claremont, so what's some goals you set for yourself this year? So um, that came- probably the first goal is probably just to... Sorry? Sorry, keep going. Sorry. Um, Probably just consistently... Well, obviously, I only came into the league squad towards the end of last year. I think I played five games. So, probably the first goal is just to consistently be playing in league and then obviously perform well, um, get some goals on the board and um, probably just have some broader goals at the moment as we're still in, like, pre-season. But I like to do goals, like, game to game more specifically. Very true. Uh, what you grew up barracking for? Um, Eagles. Eagles. Now, obviously, the Eagles girls and men's obviously struggled last season, but it would be nice, I'm sure, for you to see the girls win a game late in the against the Bombers at a very windy, windy hill. That's in its name itself. That's so windy there. Um, and then now they've just brought in someone named Daisy Pierce as coach casually. Yeah, as you do. As you do. Um, um, sorry, sorry, go on. There you go. Uh, and then obviously, then the and the men's side of things, they get the number one pick, and they get what's been touted Harley Reid as the best player of the last five years or so from a draft point of view. Yeah, he's a gun. Um, I'm pretty excited to watch the Eagles this year, specifically the men's. Like so much t- coming through, and I don't know. I think they'll hopefully be a bit more successful this year. Sure, they may well be with all these top draft picks. They m- might go a bit better. Um. So, obviously, you mentioned before about missing your draft this year, but did you have any mates that did get drafted? If so, who's somebody you're keen to see how they go this year coming? What was that? Sorry? So, did you have any teammates or friends that you knew that got drafted this year? Obviously, you mentioned missing your draft this year or last year now. Um, is, if so, if you did have some get picked up, who are you happy to see how they go at the A4W level? Um, yeah, so I went to school with Ella Slocum. And yep. I played um, juniors with her at Claremont um, for high school. And, um, yeah, very excited to see how she goes at North. It's very exciting mm. for her seeing me, like, when she started footy, I was there from the start. So super keen to see how she goes. Mm. Favourite teammate you got at the club? 
Oh, it's a tough one. Um, favorite teammates. I actually don't know. I I think it's Claremont's just a really nice place to be. Like everyone's so friendly. I probably couldn't pull out any names, but um, yeah, no, just good place to be, really. That's fair. I mean, it's it's a rare answer, but it's also sometimes a good thing to if you think about it a little bit more in detail because everyone's pretty even. There's no like standouts, I suppose. Yeah, no, it's a pretty good all rounded team. Um, yeah, can't put any names out. But um, <laughs> so. Player comparisons. If you were to use player comparisons to the type of style that you mentioned, obviously playing up forward. So, if you were to use the AFL, AFLW player comparison to the type of player you play like, who would you say that is? Um, I'd probably hope that I play a bit like Oscar Allen. Um, yep. Yeah, I just love the way he goes about his footy. Um, very good overhead, um, accurate, and just like as well as like being an up and coming leader. Um, He's had, like, so many setbacks with injury and stuff and just persevered and, I don't know, I think he's going to have a really good season. Um, yeah, just pretty much everything about his game. Very good. Uh, any nicknames you get back that you like or dislike? Um, I don't really – my name's kind of short, so it's hard to shorten, but I yes. get Becky full or Ando, but, yeah, yep. don't – Becky, and oh, yeah, <laughs> take what I get, I guess. Yeah, nice and basic sometimes is the way to go. Yeah. Sure. Any coaches' pets down at Claremont? Oh, don't know if I can name drop here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. There's, there's a few. <laughs> Probably wouldn't say I'm a coach's pet, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Be nice and safe. Sometimes that's. <laughs> Sometimes the way they go. Um, any outside of footy interests that you have? Obviously, you mentioned playing other sports in the past. Um, yeah, so I still play netball. Um, probably I used to play like quite a lot more athletic, tennis, cricket, but probably dropped a few along the years. Um, mm. Just like putting a bit more time into footy. But, um, mm. yeah, pretty much sport, really. Play a bit of tennis still, but, yeah. So did you just mention cricket or am I hearing things? No, I did used to play cricket, yeah. So how did you feel you went at cricket? Were you a batter, all rounder, a fielder, a scorer, a bench warmer? What were you what were you under what banner were you under? Um I say I was a bowler, um, pretty good fielder. Batting never put too much time into that, but um I think I stopped playing cricket at seven or eight. Yeah. Just playing with the boys as well. It's good fun. Um, <laughs> when you were to play cricket, you mentioned there being more of one position than the other. Would you say you only deal in boundaries and only deal in wickets? That's a motto I've been using in my own cricket. You know, it's either boundaries or nothing. And when you're bowling, it's wickets or nothing. Um, yeah, hopefully um, got more wickets. <laughs> that would be good. Um, yeah. Now... <laughs> Any favourite TV shows or movies that you have? Oh, um, I don't really have a TV show at the moment, but hmm, I don't know. I kind of just watch a bit of everything, really. Is there any type of genre that you prefer, like a comedy, a drama, a sporty, a horror one? Is it, what genre would you say then, or even then? Um, I like more of the um real life stuff, not into the fantasy, horror, that kind of stuff, but I like comedy, action, some rom com, yeah. yeah, any of that. Very good. Um, any particular comedy shows? I know you said you don't really have a favourite, but is there any type of comedy shows that you like watching? It, not necessarily your favourite, but just like watching in general? Um, Probably, the, I don't know if you'd say it's a TV show. Well, probably is, but I like watching The Front Bar. It's always. Oh, funny. yeah. Uh, from Channel 7, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'm more the other show, uh, not the front bar, but anyway, that's fine. Um, I, I hear a lot of people like it, the front bar on Channel 7, but I, I don't know. What what do you like about that? Because I cannot get into that one. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't ah. know. I just, 
I don't know, when they bring people onto the show, it's good to hear from a lot of stars and then just, mate, I don't know, they're just funny. Yeah, that's fair. I'm more on the Channel 9 side of things with, um, with uh, TJ, Tony Jones and Kane Corns and those guys. I just, I don't know, I just love that show, how they, they, you know, they have their seriousness, they have their jokes. I think it's just the chemistry, I feel like. I'm not saying that seven one that doesn't, but I, I like the one that channel and I've always probably watched that one longer. Probably because I didn't want to start another one. And sometimes that they clash with each other sometimes as well, depending on what night it is. But anyway, yeah. nothing about that. Uh, what do you feel is the best individual game you've ever played in that's got you into the position that you're in right now? Oh. Um I don't know. Probably aspects from a couple games that I'd pull out, but can't put my finger on one specific game. Um, yeah. Any, like, a, is there any, like, a season or a chunk of form that you feel like you might have kicked, say, 15 goals in a four-week period? Is there anything that jumps out from an overall point of view then? Um, Probably last season was definitely standout here. Um, I got recognised for a bit for that, which is good. Um, Obviously, on the back of that, got picked for the State 18, so I think definitely last year and then... Played pretty well in the grand final, I think. Um, kicked the goal, yeah. That's fair enough. Um, the best now, you've been a forward, you kick goals are fun. So what is the best goal you've ever kicked, Beck? Um, I remember, I think it was either last season or the season before. Um, mm-hmm. That lead of um, Kicked a check side set shot from the pocket. That was pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> now, was yeah. that on the... So you're a right footer or a left footer? Right footer. Yeah. Okay, so you kick that on the right hand side or the left side? The right hand side. Makes that even more impressive. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, um, probably that one or the goal in the grand final was pretty good with the pressure on me there as well. Very true. Now, if you were to best describe the best goal you would want to kick and be as unrealistic as you want, what would it be? Would it be a check? Well, actually, you've just done a check, so it's probably not that. Uh, Torp, um, a dribble kick um, after the siren, 50 metres out in the wet. If you were to best describe as unrealistic as you want, the scenario, the moment, everything, uh, what would you choose? I'd probably say after the siren would probably be, not a dream, but, yeah, like just taking taking in the pressure, like, it was a close game, specifically. Um, Yeah, pretty big kick after the sign would be cool. One that always comes to mind every time I bring this question up and someone says that type of goal is Dan Houston from the Power against Bombers Lunch. I don't know if you've seen it from the MCG. In that wet conditions, it was like, he's a, now, Dan Houston is probably the best kick in the com, but in that conditions, you can forgive him for missing this. It was like 53 metres out. On an angle towards the boundary on the right hand side, being a right footer for him in the wet after the siren, a waterlogged ball, mind you, and it's spinning a little bit, so it's a bit drizzly and everything. You probably can't get much better than that in that type of example that you gave. Yeah, I do actually remember watching that game. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely in the wet, put a bit of um, bit extra pressure there. So yeah, that was that was a very good goal. Yeah, uh, and how they didn't get goal of the year, I'd love to still know. And even now, now that we bring it up, I still get annoyed about how they didn't win when you add all those moments that we just described. And it, it just showed how confident Ken Hinckley was. I don't know if you recall when they panned to the coach's box, Ken was looking on the face. We don't know definitely what he said, but it looked like he's confident. And, yeah, he's got these fellas who are all good. He's smiling like they won when the siren went before he kicked it. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a ripper, Dan Houston. Um, now... Who loves the limelight, the attention, the camera at Claremont, and they can't get enough of it, and why? Um, I'd, mm, I don't know. I'd, well, you're right, like, likes the attention a bit, I'd say. Um, yeah, I don't know, actually. It's a tough one. Don't really think about that. <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, where was I? Um. Who do you feel the best player in the A4W competition is? Because it's probably, honestly, a bit different to the men's where it's the women's ones so even. You know, you couldn't really go wrong with anyone you pick at the top. You obviously got Mon Conti, Jazz Garner, Ash Riddell, Laura Garner, Ebony Marinoff, Ali Morford, Ella Roberts, Ali Goldsworth. There's so many names you could put in that position. Who would you put as the best player in the A4W competition? Um, uh, Tough, like with all the different 
roles that they'll play, but I'd probably say I'd say Ella Roberts is going to be up there, like up and coming. Um, sure. Definitely think she's got heaps of potential. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and something that's a credit to her finishing third in the um, Rising Star this year alongside Zali Goldsworth and Ellie Morford. I mean, in, when I'd done my own boats and everything like that, my own Australian team, et cetera, I had, I had a three-way tie, including Ella, with Zali and Ellie, because she just currently split them. And something that Ella has on some other people that some people don't have is she can play on anywhere on the field. She can play up forward, and she's shown that this year, play up forward, play down back playing the midfield and knowing the way she plays in those positions, she could probably play in the ruck and she's got the height for it actually to do that as well. Yeah, she could basically go anywhere. So versatile. It's probably Absolutely. another reason why I'd put her up there as well. Absolutely. Because as I say, and I'm, and people start to notice to say now, and these days, last few years in particular, versatility is key. Yeah. Definitely. Need to be able to, even if Even if you're playing in the same position, I feel like you need to be, say, for example, say it's a keep forward kicking goals. Kicking goals is great, but also providing pressure and everything like that, like all those other things around it, that, you know, to keep your spot in the team or that definitely would help keep it anyway. Um, best – oh, that's right. What's something someone does at the club that you cannot send, whether that's leaving rubbish around, trying to scare people, that seems to be a trend these days, especially at AFLW level, or just being flat out annoying. Is there anything that comes to mind that someone does, or just in general that someone does that you don't like? Um, I probably can't put a name on it, but I've seen mm. many people do it. I absolutely hate when people spit like on the foot field. Like I actually can't stand it. <laughs> it's disgusting. That's fair. I've yeah, I've seen that happen a fair bit. Now, what are some fun facts about you, Beck, that people may not know about you? Um, I I don't know anything fun. Um, facts about you then. <laughs> well, I have a farm. Um, and well, my sister cut my finger open. We're having having a little bit of a fight, and oh I dear, injury on the finger. That was, I guess that. Yeah. That. Yep. That that's. Um, fun. So you're, you're good. I heard that. Yeah, so a bit of Sicily fights. Uh, it's not like I haven't no one. That'd be – that's pretty common. Brotherly fights, sister fights. It's yeah, – been there, done that. Um, it's bound to so, happen. Exactly. Maybe not that extreme, but, yes, that always happens. Now, defenders, I feel like they deserve a bit more love. Obviously, the forwards, they obviously got the Coleman, the midfielders with the Brownlow, and even Rucks these days get recognised in the Brownlow. Do defenders – need their own official award as well and whatever you want to call it but do they need one i'd actually probably say yes um yeah. in the game against the all-stars um last weekend i actually got chucked in full back um due to an injury and i no. actually never, never played full back probably mucked around in juniors but never properly yeah. and or oh, felt the pressure um yeah i definitely think that they need some more recognition for what they do. Sure. Now, Beck, obviously, oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but, yeah, so playing in that All-Stars game in the All-Stars for your under ratings, how was it playing in that game for you personally? How do you feel you went? And obviously, you mentioned getting chucked down back. How do you feel your overall, the game went for you? And as a whole, how was the experience to play against people that are at very similar issue or, if not a bit older, that have played at AFLW level before as well? Yeah, I think, well, overall from... Um, the 18s perspective um, it was a very clean game, I'd say, from us. Um, yeah. It was just everyone was like, oh, it's, it was such good footy to watch. Um, yeah, no, I definitely think we played very well. Um, and personally, probably, obviously, wasn't expecting a bit of a change of plans during the game, but um, mm. obviously, was preparing myself to play forward and then was just getting into it. And then they're like, oh, well, we need someone to go down back. So, um, yeah, obviously never really playing there. Um, I think I did pretty well considering um, held my own definitely. Um, mm. Yeah, with the experience that I had down back, I think I did quite well. That's good. So who are some of the under eighteen girls that are in their draft year as well this year that you feel impressed you? Because obviously there's some talented girls in there who will be drafted at the end of the year and will be top picks. Um, definitely Zippy Fish is... Stand out and Molly, um, 
they definitely played very well. Um, also, Renee Morgan and um, Evie Couch are definitely, you'll definitely see them out there. I reckon they played very well, especially, yeah. Very, very true. Um, and how was just the experience overall to be being a part of that day and getting the, the call or text to get invited to be a part of that game must be pretty cool. And to show that you are not that far off yourself being in that conversation if you're in those type of games where it's the best of the best of the state. Yeah, um, definitely an honour to play in that game. Um, it's a very good experience to play at such a high-level game before the season to get some um, yeah. game time with the belt. Um, yeah, it was very cool. That's good. Uh, now, have you ever had any AFL or for w player interactions as a fan? If so... Were they any memorable or forgettable moments? Um, probably the most interaction probably um, I was in Horrocks like on holidays, and yep. um, at my family friend's house, and we, as you do when you're little, um, made a banana milkshake stand on the side of the yep. road, and yes. Josh Kennedy rolled up. Um, oh, nice. Us and said they were the best milkshakes he's ever had so cop that <laughs> that's i know that's that's pretty cool i mean and you said you were younger too, so are you talking like six under six years ago uh more than six years ago um yeah i'd probably say about six years ago okay so you're around 12 years old at that point so it must be pretty cool to get a compliment like that from someone of josh kennedy from the eagles level and, and anyone in general of course i'm not downgrading because you pop celebrity status or not but um to hear it from someone you and you've been an eagles fan that also must have made it even more better too yeah he was definitely um one of my favorite players at the time so when he drove past we were like oh my mm. god yeah pretty cool he he didn't uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a joke here let's see if you get um did he bring out the stutter step when he came up to you for the drink <laughs> no he did not <laughs> He did not. Fair enough. Uh, what would you say is some of your most prized possessions? Oh, prized possessions. Um, yeah, things like I don't know if I have any. Prize. Okay, well, so there's nothing. Right? Is there any items or things you have that you can't live without? I'll rephrase the question. Is there anything that you can't live without? Um. Probably um, a footy and food. I love my food. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, not a phone. Uh, no, I reckon I could go without it. I'd choose a footy. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the options you said, but you, you could add a phone to the mix. Because I, honestly, if I'm being honest here, I feel like people at your age and my age is not much different to you. Um, they're probably lying to some degree. That they can't live. That doesn't mean it's their number one thing, but they would still use it and need it, or anyone needs one. Yeah, I probably it just wouldn't be my first pick, but obviously that, be pretty helpful. That's very true. Who do you feel is the toughest opponent you've ever had to match up on, and would it have been someone that you played in that recent state game? Also. Hard to put my finger on one, but speaking of the state game, uh, it was pretty. Um, Andrew Rayson was pretty tough opponent to play on down back. Yeah, um, felt even more pressure then. She's just very strong overhead and just a unit, really. Sure. I, honestly, I was there was two plays that came to mind when the draft finished that didn't get picked up. But Angelique Rayson was one, and Jamie Henry was a fellow WA girl as well. I cannot believe for the hype that they both got from a media point of view, you know, going, oh, yeah, they'll be around this top 30 pick range, you know, yada, yada, yada. I was gobsmacked when neither of them were picked up because both have shown what talented young players they are. Yeah, I think um, WA definitely got a bit robbed last year. Yes. Definitely very good players and I think they should have got picked up. I'm sure. I mean, just, just for myself personally, looking at all the top draft picks this year, last year it was all they say – Obviously, Loz Young, Shana, everyone poor picked up. They picked up six top 
10 drop-its I were having an open pool. And then, obviously, there were some others that went to other clubs. But, uh, yeah, I think this is the year of the draft from the AFW point of view of WA. Also, you mentioned Zippy Fish, Molio here, um, and Angelique Raisin and Jamie Henry, who both missed out, I'm sure, will be up there again yourself. And then there's plenty of Zippy Fish. There's so many names that will be up there this year. Yeah, I think there's definitely heaps of talent coming through. So, hopefully, WA um, get looked after a bit more. For sure, and then again, I've just forgot some other names: Georgia Haynes, Holly Britton. There's, there's plenty. There'll be, I'm sure, there'll be plenty up there this time. Oh, yeah, in December, later on, or November, whenever it end up being at the end of the year. Um, who's some teammates you feel uh, you're impressed by? They kind of fly under the radar a little bit. That don't get talked about as much as they shouldn't. They're under underrated, I would say. Um, I'd say definitely Juliet Kelly. She's quite young um but definitely holds her own um i think she's got a lot of potential as well she's definitely um improving every year so i think yeah definitely flies the radar um, mm. now favorite food you said you like food so what's your favorite food um probably go with the steaks um yeah definitely my first choice Medium, rare, well cooked. How would you for your steak? What, what, what? Um, which one would you pick? Um, I'm a medium, well, yeah. Fair enough. Um, food you don't like? Um, mm, I don't. I don't like cucumber. Okay. And don't like eggs, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to like them, but definitely hate cucumber. That's that's the, first, that's the first time I've heard egg in the non like category. Interesting. Oh, yeah. it's all right. Now, some important food questions. I mean, there are things I'm sure you've heard of a million times. But I want to, since we're talking about food, I'm also bring it up. Uh, pineapple does it or does it not belong on a pizza? Absolutely belongs on pizza. Yeah, definitely. I, I'll ignore that. Um, <laughs> now. Tomato sauce, pantry or f cupboard or fridge? Um, cupboard, yeah. Good, we one for one. Good, I'll, I'll, well, I'll accept that. I'll take the moral victory there. Uh, best dish to cook that you cook, or if you don't cook, something that you just, um, or some other, something basic you would do. Um, probably go to like a noodle stir fry, like hockey and noodles. Um. Yeah, like honey soy teriyaki stir fry. Good. Uh, that's, that's fair enough. Now, quirks someone would say that you have that you would not like to admit. Quirks. Um, I can't think. There's, there's probably a lot, but I'm a bit stuck here. <laughs> that's that's fair enough. Um, celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Hmm. Well, I said definitely Charlie Kerno. Okay. That's that's <laughs> a fair answer. You know, surprisingly, I've asked this question to many people the last three weeks, and everyone's always said celebrities. Bar one person recently said Bailey Smith. So I'm glad someone's saying an AFL player. Yeah, well, it seems relevant. <laughs> yes. And, well... I mean, you can call it unrealistic, realistic, whatever you like, but at least an AFL player is more realistic than, say, some someone in America, for example. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, I think I know that we mentioned this before. I wish we did mention this earlier, so I was going to ask you about in front of the goals again. Um, dream scenario for you. Uh, this will be the last question. I appreciate you coming on, Beck. Um, what is your dream scenario threat the rest of this football season for you? Um, probably dream scenario to play every league game, not get injured, touch wood, um, and then hopefully get selected to um, play in the national champs. Um, yeah, good state. That'll be amazing. No, that's right. Um, obviously, to play in the state, which would show again. Obviously, you just as said in the All Stars game, so that's one step further. Getting the state championships, and then again that next step up will show. And even if you don't get that, that does not mean that you can't get picked up. So, Beck, 
Really appreciate you coming on. All the best for the rest of the season and uh, good luck with all that goal kicking. Hopefully it ends up going well and the end of the year. So appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.